Good morning, Good Shepherd. It's so great to be worshiping here uh, with you this morning uh, in your homes, wherever you are. Uh, we are just, uh, you know, we're making it through uh, one week at a time, one day at a time. Um, and so, uh, you know, in, in difficult times, sometimes worship is the best thing we could possibly do because it's in God's presence that our hope is truly found, that our, our peace and our strength are found. And so uh, our hope for this time of worship is that it'll create some space in your day that you can meet with God. That our only desire is to meet with God in this moment, to just experience his presence. And so as a church, spread across every home. Let's just take a moment and receive what God has for us this morning. God, we wanna worship you with as much passion and authenticity as we've ever worshiped you before. God, you are glorified and you are worthy of worship in a home as much as you are in a church building, God. God, your presence it's not bound by physical walls. It's not bound by any barriers. And so, Lord, your presence is here with us right now. It transcends everything. And so, Lord, we receive you right now. We receive your presence. We want to worship you with everything that we have. Let's worship God together.
reveal what's to come The thoughts in his mind Always higher than mine He'd reveal all to come Stay courage, my heart Stay steadfast, my soul He's in the waiting He's in the waiting Hold on to your hope As your triumph unfolds He's never failing He's never failing is in the waiting. As part of claiming that promise this morning, I just want to invite us to take a moment of waiting. Take a moment of receiving. 
just clearing our thoughts, clearing our minds, taking a deep breath, and just waiting on God, waiting on his voice. Just take a moment and do that right now. shame all your sin right now he's in the way give to him every distraction let this be a holy moment a moment of Jesus wait on you Jesus Wait on you, Jesus. Wait on you, Jesus. Now, having hopefully taken a moment to receive the peace of God, let's extend that peace to one another. Uh, extend peace to the people in your home who are watching with you. Uh, grab your phone, text a word of peace to someone uh, who God puts on your heart. Uh, you can always comment on Facebook or on our live chat. Just spread the peace of God to your neighbors, to your friends, uh, to your community right now. And as you do that, uh, we have a special video from our kids ministry director, Kristen Anwater. He, she wanted to uh, share a video for the kids, and so we're going to roll that right now. Good morning, Good Shepherd. I'm Kristen, your Children's Ministries Director, and I have a quick little lesson for you this morning. So kids, if you're in the room, I uh, normally would invite you to come up to the front of the church. So now I'm asking you to come up to the front, gather around your TV screen or computer screen so you're right up front so you can see what we're going to do. I have a fun little lesson today, uh, and uh, the Bible point I want to make today is Jesus wants to be with children. And so this comes to us from Matthew 19, 13 through 15. So I'm gonna read that for you real quick. It says in the Bible, then the children were brought to Jesus uh, for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went from there." So the point is Jesus wants the children to come to him, and he wants to be friends with you kids and also your parents and all you adults out there, Jesus wants to be your friend too. So I have a little experiment to show this uh, example to you today. It just involves some tape. So if you have scotch tape at home, you can try this again later, and it's it's a lot of fun. I've done it with my kids. I actually found this little object lesson a couple months ago and have been waiting for a good time to use it. So today is the day. So I am going to place it on, on the table here and I'm just going to tape it down, leave a little bit uh, of room so that you can pull it up quickly. And we're going to need two pieces of tape. So I'm just going to tape these down here. And then I'm going to pull them up. And the disciples told the parents of the kids in our story today not to come to Jesus. And you can see he was trying to keep them away. And if you can see, the pieces of tape are repelling. And this has to do with uh, charge and ions and all that fun stuff. So you scientists out there, you can have fun explaining that to your kids. So you can see it's repelling. 
So now we're going to demonstrate how much Jesus wants to be with the children. So I'm going to tape down the first piece of tape, and then right on top of it, I'm going to tape down the second piece of tape, and I'm going to press these down. And we'll see if this works. And then we're going to pull up the first one, and we're going to pull up the second one. And now we have the example of Jesus who wants the children to come to him. And I have some wind in my backyard. Let's try that. Let's try that again. Sometimes it takes twice before it works. The wind is not helping. There we go. All right. Now, even with the wind, you can see that the tape is attracted. They want to be together. And that's what Jesus wants. Jesus wants to be your friend. He wants the children to come to him. There goes our wind again. Parents, he wants, the, he wants you to be his friend as well. All the adults out there, Jesus wants to be our friend. And this little example reminds us that he wants us to come to him. He doesn't want us to push him away when we're scared or when we are living in crazy times with COVID-19. He wants us to come to him and bring our fears and our worries and our joys and our sorrows. He wants us to bring that to him and he wants to be with us and he wants to be our friend. And so I hope that this little lesson has helped explain uh, and demonstrate how much Jesus wants to be our friend. And I hope you'll remember that uh, in these coming days and weeks. I'm going to say a quick prayer and then we'll get back to our church service. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you want to be with the children and you want us to be with you and you want us to be your friend. And we thank you for the ways that you encourage us to come to you with our worries, with our fears, with our joys, with our sorrows. And Lord, I just pray your blessings upon our families, upon our church community, upon our community at large and our nation. And Lord, I just ask that you would make yourself known to everyone out there, particularly during these crazy times. And Lord, I just pray that your peace would just descend on all of us and we would just feel your peace and know your friendship and we know that you are always in control. And so Lord, we just thank you today for the good things that we have, for the ways that you've blessed us. And Lord, I just lift all these things up in your name. Amen. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and enter into a time of announcements. We just have a couple quick announcements that we want to share with you. Um, first of all, uh, up on the screen, uh, we should have an announcement for the food pantry. Um, so uh, with everything that's going on, uh, uh, our food pantry has been uh, sort of taxed. Um, uh, a lot of people have been using it, and so we're in need of new donations. Um, and so uh, what you can do is donate to our food pantry and just call the office um, before you drop off. The number is going to be on the screen. And uh, you can just uh, drop off any uh, food, um, canned goods, stuff like that. We actually have a list of, of uh, the, the foods that you can bring uh, on the next slide. Uh, so um, uh, you can bring cereal, canned or boxed meals, canned meats, canned vegetables, Nutrigrain bars, uh, sauce chips, jelly, that sort of thing. Uh, so um, just contact the office for more details on that. Um, it's just a great way to love and serve our community by making sure our food pantry is fully stocked. Um, up next, I uh, just wanted to remind you that our virtual small groups are still going strong. Uh, so um, there's a list of small groups that hopefully you guys um, have uh, been able to connect with. Um, but I uh, just wanted to share those with you. Uh, first, first of all, um, we've got our, our virtual small groups that are meeting. Uh, hopefully should be an email about that. And then also we're doing our devotionals, uh, every, um, our, or sorry, our daily prayers at 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Facebook Live. Uh, this is a great way to just stay connected with God in a, in a steady rhythm of prayer. Uh, every morning and evening, Pastor Trevor leads a time of prayer on Facebook Live. And then our daily devotionals, we've been posting those uh, uh, on weekdays. Uh, so um, 
just check those out on our YouTube page at LCGS Torrance or on Facebook. Uh, and so those are just great ways to stay connected to what God is doing, stay connected as a community, if, even if we can't be together in person. And so, uh, yeah, just uh, stay connected with that. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Pastor Trevor. Good morning. Happy Easter to you, my Good Shepherd family. Yeah, it is still Easter. Easter is not just one day, it's a whole season in the church calendar. We are actually Easter people. So good morning to you. As we were worshiping this morning, I just got this vision of this whole house full of all of us together praising God. And it just came across me just a feeling of, man, I miss gathering with you. I miss you. I miss being with you. Um, just physically in this space, praising God together. Um, so yeah, I miss, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I, I do, definitely. And as a people, Easter people, we always look for the opportunity in these seasons. And I think there's an incredible opportunity for us, although I miss us meeting here in this place together the church, more than any time in the history of the U.S., is meeting in homes. And there's an important, powerful gift to that, that the church is dispersed. Because in reality, the church is the center for Christian discipleship. The church is the center for spiritual growth. The church is the place where our faith should be the most real. It is the place that we should honor God it is the place that we should worship the most. And so in this season of being in your home, I'm claiming that truth over us and encouraging each one of us to worship God in our homes. Now here's a, a question for you to ponder. Did you grow up in a home where faith was alive and real? Think about that. Some of you, like me, had the gift of having parents who talked about God in the house who prayed together in the house, who listened to what God had to say. But very many of us didn't have that opportunity. So as I'm speaking about, hey, bringing God into the home, bringing Christ in the home, some of us don't even have a model of what that looks like because we haven't been taught that. And that's just interesting because you and I are learning how to do that in this season. Here's another question. Is there a living and real faith in your home? Wow, that's a question I ponder about. Will my kids, Levi and Ruach, come to know Jesus in their daily life in my home? Will they meet the living Jesus in how we live our day? I ask these questions because I really want to encourage us this morning to get rooted in our homes, and we've actually created this service a little bit to try and help us have these spiritual conversations in our homes. And so I'm going to ask you, go grab your Bible, because wherever you are, I don't want you just to be sitting on the couch watching this. I want you opening your scripture, underlining words, and going for it, okay? So go ahead, get your Bible right now. Also, we're going to be doing communion, and we're going to be sharing that in your home either with those around you or you're going to have this intimate moment with Jesus sharing in communion. So get some wine, grape juice, bread or crackers out, okay? You're going to need that. And then also during the prayer time, I'm going to ask you to gather and pray together. Those are some of the ways that we are trying to help teach my family and your family how to worship in our homes, that our homes would be places of worship so turn on that worship music when you're doing the dishes. I mean, come on, let's get practical. Wake up and pray with your family. Have those devotionals every day. Well, this morning, we're going to be preaching and studying the book of James. We're starting this series on the book of James, and I think you'll find it to be very practical. I love this book because I'm an activist. I love doing things, and, and James came out of that mentality. He gives us some things to do. And so this morning, I've entitled this, it's a quote from James. This sermon is, Consider it an opportunity for great 
joy. And we'll be focusing on James chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. So go ahead and open your Bibles to the book of James. It's in the New Testament. It's one of the epistles, one of the ones that's not written by Paul. So open that wherever you are. And as you're doing that, let me pray for us. Dear Jesus, we just praise you that even though we're dispersed among these places, we are united by your spirit. So Father, we just pray that you would change our mind in this season. Do you help us to be people, Easter people of joy, God? That you would uh, switch the paradigms of how we see challenges, the very real challenges that we face, God, and that you would use your words to speak to us about what we value the most. Give us joy in our hardship. Give us wisdom as we face difficult seasons. And God, would these words be yours? Would they speak into mine and my brothers' and sisters' hearts that we would take courage our hearts? We pray this and all God's people said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so let's begin. This book starts off with this, chapter 1 of James, verse 1. This is a letter from James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was James who wrote this book. And let me tell you a little bit about James. Very humble here because he says he's a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was actually Jesus' half-brother. Half-brother because Jesus and the Holy Spirit created I mean, excuse me, Mary and the Holy Spirit (laughs) created Jesus, half uh, fully God and fully man, right? And Joseph wasn't a part of that. (laughs) And so the brothers and sisters that Jesus had were half brothers and sisters. And actually, interestingly enough, in the Gospels, we find that Jesus' brothers and sisters didn't really believe he was the Son of God. They... In, in the Gospels, they doubted it, and they were like, actually, at some points, trying to pull him back and like say, Jesus, what are you doing? Later, after Jesus died and rose, um, the, the Bible says in Corinthians that Jesus appeared to James, and that was his turning point where he recognized that Jesus was who he said he was. And after that, that changed in total trajectory of James' life. He became one of the lead pastors of a church in Jerusalem. We find that in Acts. And later, about 30 years after his brother Jesus was crucified, Pastor James, James the Apostle, James was then um, martyred for his own faith, martyred for his beliefs, even the very same beliefs that we will be reading about today. And so that's a little bit about this James, the brother of Jesus. If I was the brother of Jesus, I think that's how I would introduce myself. Hey, I'm James, the brother of Jesus. No big deal. But no, a Christian is always the servant. A leader is always the slave of first God and those around us. And so as we go to the next verse, we see who he's writing this to. He says, dear brothers, uh, he says this, I'm writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad, greetings. So what he's doing, he's actually writing to the church members in Jerusalem, and he's using a poetic way to talk about this talking about the 12 tribes that are dispersed. That's a reference to the Old Testament, uh, Old Testament when the Jewish nation was dispersed. It's called the diaspora. And right now in this season in Jerusalem, it's a time of heavy persecution. So the church cannot gather together in large numbers. They actually were dispersed among the city. And so James writes this letter amongst this time. And we get a little taste of what the persecution was like when we look at Acts and we look at St. Stephen who was stoned to death because of his faith. After the religious leaders killed Jesus, they didn't stop there. They went after Jesus' followers 
And we see that most poignantly with Saul, who was, going, who was killing Christians, but who became St. Paul, the one who was lowered out of the city wall, the, the famous scholar now being lowered from the city wall because of the persecution around him. And so James is writing to a people that's dispersed and suffering great challenges. Now, this letter is actually to us too. Because my brothers and sisters, we live in a season where we are dispersed. Be it we are not dispersed by direct persecution, we are dispersed by the COVID-19 crisis. And though our challenges probably pale in comparison to the ones that these early disciples faced, we can relate a little bit to some of the suffering, the isolation, the feelings of, God, what are we, what's going on now? We can relate a little bit to the struggles that may, they may have faced. And actually, if this crisis happened about 100 years ago, instead of preaching to you over a video, what would I, the pastor of this area, what would I do? I would write a letter. And so that's what James does. He writes a letter to his people. He writes a letter to his people, and this is what it says. I love James. He goes right to the point. This is what it says. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when you, your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Perfect and complete, needing nothing. Now that you have your Bibles open, I want you to circle something. Circle the word when. James is, is sharing this message to a people who know troubles. And actually, let's not be fooled. Troubles are a part of life. It is a part of how we live on this earth. So he says, when the troubles come, troubles of various kinds, troubles of different kinds that come our way. So I wonder... What type of troubles are you finding yourself and your family in? What are the challenges that you face? I've been calling people in our community all week, and the challenges vary from small to large in our community. We have people that are suffering, that are having terrible nightmares um, because of the anxiety, and they're not getting enough sleep, and, and the challenges. We have people that feel isolated and alone. We have people that are suffering financial hardship who are coming and using our food pantries. There's, there's the whole gamut. And let me tell you, if you're one of those people that's like, no, oh, this isn't that bad, I would ask you, go call your brothers and sisters and listen to what's going on and why don't you feel their pain so that you can be a part of the compassionate response that we need in this season of crisis. So yes, when trouble comes, what? Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Oh, don't you love that phrase? Consider it an opportunity for great joy. I love this outlook, but I don't like the journey that gets me there. <laughs> don't, don't we want to we wanna have this mindset that we want to be people who consider troubles as an opportunity for joy, but we don't like the road that would take us there, a road of endurance. You know, as I was thinking about this concept, I was thinking about how we can relate this concept to what we experience in our lives. And I think people who work out, people who are athletes have this understanding you can consider it joy when you're enduring and you're challenging yourself because you're growing. Or, or um, Bobby is here helping us out this morning, and he just had uh, two little babies. Amy Ronglian, uh, you gave birth. You're an amazing woman. Um, but 
isn't it funny? I've been to baby showers before and it's such a joyful time. Everyone is so excited and I'm like, uh, what about the struggle? What about this journey that you're going to take for nine months that's hard, morning sickness and then giving birth, and yet it is a great joy, a great joy to give birth. Why? Because you look at what happens on the other side of it, what is produced, an incredible miracle of life. You can consider that a great joy. And is that not what Jesus said? Look at Hebrews with me. It says this, Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. There's that word again, endurance. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You see, Jesus considered the cross an opportunity for joy. What was the joy he was talking about? What was the joy he was looking for, forward to? The future joy of walking intimately with you and being able to forgive you of your sins, that you could have a close, close relationship with him. That is the joy that was before him in which he endured the cross through. You see, in troubling times, it's an opportunity to capture joy. Troubles are an opportunity for joy. Considered it an opportunity for joy. Now, why? Here, in this scripture passage, James says this, He says, consider it an opportunity for great joy, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. You see, James valued something. James had a value that endurance and perseverance was something that was good in one's life. Now, as I talk about values, values are the things that you build your life upon. It it shows you what your character is, what you build your home upon. It's the rock that you stand on. What are the things that you value? Organizations have them. Values. The way that they pass on what is most important to them. And what James is doing, he's passing on a value to us this morning of the joyful struggle. The endurance, the perseverance that we must have. Why? Because it builds character in us. And we must be people who have a larger inside than outside. Values. As I think about values, I was listening to one of my favorite leaders, John Maxwell, and he put out a podcast about COVID-19, and he quoted this uh, George Bernus study of the values of America. And he was thinking about why this crisis is so bad and why is there so much fear? And he was reflecting on the values, that we have a poverty of values in the United States. And because of that, as this crisis, as this trouble has come to us, as the storm of this thing has hit us, we recognize our values are not solid ground. Now, take a look at the screen. Here are the values. Top nine values. Look at this. Acceptance, control, comfort, entertainment, entitlement, experience, expression, freedom, happiness. Now, let me ask you this. How are these values holding up right now? How comfortable is it, is your life in these trying times of struggle. If that's your value, you're a little shaky right now. How much control do we have? That control has been stripped from us. And we're living in a time of total uncertainty in all areas of our lives. Entertainment. How much can you 
be entertained in your home. You're not going out shopping or going out to do whatever. Entitlement, experience, expression, freedom. Oh, we see our freedoms being eroded. Happiness. Oh man, if this is what we value, if these are the things that our culture holds most dear, then we are indeed in trouble. No wonder there is so much fear because we have built our lives on false values. And how do we know it's false? When the storm comes, we have nothing left to stand on. So here we are, my brothers and sisters. And James is urging us to value perseverance. So I ask you this morning, do you value endurance? Is one of your values perseverance? Is one of your values character? Is it hope? Check this out. Romans chapter 5 now, verses 3. Not only so, listen to this, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings or consider it an opportunity for joy. That's James' wordings of the same idea. We also glory in our sufferings because we know that, the, that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Perseverance leads to character. Character leads to hope. And hope is fully realized because we have a living God who loves us and gives us what we need to endure. Living in our hearts. My friends, it is in this season that we must embrace these values. We must fully understand that God is with us totally, that God is in our hearts and is giving us the strength we need to put one foot in front of the other. How do we do that? How do we value those type of things? It's a profound question because in a culture that values something else, how do we break into and break out of it, so to speak, and get other values so that we can learn to, to put other values and work through other values in our lives. And one of the solutions is we need to look into the lives of the saints who have endured much suffering in the past so that we can learn from them on how to consider it joy when we encounter various struggles. This morning, then, I want to take a look at two examples. This is a woman who endured a lot of challenge. Her name is Annie Johnson Flint. She wrote an incredible hymn I want to share to you. But first you must know the pain and suffering that wrote this hymn. At the age of three, she was orphaned when her mom, mother died giving birth to her sister of an incurable disease. She was picked up by a, a, a family, rose her up in the Christian faith, when she graduated high school, she became a teacher, and three years into it, she got incredible arthritis, which ended up debilitating her. She wasn't able to carry out her passion of teaching children, and she was left in a wheelchair, much like the picture that you see here. In that same time, both of her adopted parents died within a month of each other, and she was left, left to survive and try and take care of her sister during this season of intense physical challenge. She was in a helpless, hopeless state. As she grew, her arthritis got worse and worse and worse. And what she did is she turned to writing hymns and prayers 
as her body languished and she became so immobile, she would be laying in bed and she would have so many bed sores. Eventually she got cancer and even began to go blind. And it is in this that she wrote this hymn. A woman who knows suffering. May these words of someone who considered it joy because her God gave her what she needed. Listen to this. This is it. He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the labors increase. To added affliction, he addeth his mercy. To multiplied trials, he multiplied peace. And when we have exhausted our store of endurance, and when our strength has failed ere the day is half done, when we reach the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's full giving is only begun. Fear not, thy need shall exceed his provision. Our God ever yearns his resources to share. Lean hard on the arm everlasting availing. The Father, both thee and thy low will upbear. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power no boundary known unto man. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth again. For Annie, she came to know in the challenge and troubles of love, life, it was an opportunity to draw on the strength of Jesus Christ. The troubles in her life caused her to rely more on Jesus. Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. The next example is a simple one. I asked my brother Bob Wronglian, a historian, of when were the times in Christian history where um, they, it, they were encountered by plagues or death and, and what did the church do? And he told me that there was two times, well, there were many times, but one of the two times was the Antonian plague of A.D. Uh, 165 to 180 in the Cyprian plague of A.D. 249 and year 262, each of which these plagues wiped out about 25 to 30 percent of the entire population in the Roman Empire. Now what was amazing is that the Christians inside of this plague, they saw this as an opportunity to love and serve those around them to love serve those around them amazing that christians have seen hardship as an opportunity for joy so i ask you do you see covid19 as an opportunity to serve those around you do we consider it an opportunity for endurance an opportunity for wisdom and opportunity for the love and hope of those around us. As I begin to close this sermon, there's just two quick things I want to encourage you with as we look at this next passage of James, turning our eyes back to James chapter 1, verse 5. Rightly so, in the midst of crisis, what does James say? Consider it all joy. Endure, persevere, and then he says, verse 5, but if you lack wisdom, right? Because in times of um, struggle and trial, we're asking God, what's going on here? And so rightly so, James says, we need wisdom. So he says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person who is divided, a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Two quick things. When we are faced with challenges bigger than us. Will we seek God for wisdom 
or will we turn away from God? Some of us now, in this season, we are blown by the wind. We are getting, our faith is getting knocked down. We're like a wave tossed back and forth. You know why? Because we haven't built our lives on the rock of God. We are not seeking him for the wisdom that we need to continue on in this journey. I've been calling a lot of my mentors and throughout the years, this is not just the practice I do now, and I ask them this great question, what is the greatest lesson you've learned in your life? And you know what invariably they, they turn to? They turn to one of their darkest moments in their life. They turn to one of the, the, most, uh, the greatest struggles that they have And they talk to me about the wisdom that God showed them inside of those dark times. You see, we can consider it all joy because out of trials, we can seek God's face for wisdom. And God supplies wisdom. Challenge is an opportunity for joy because we grow in wisdom. And here's the sad reality. Some of us, some of us will get through the end of this and we won't be a day wiser. That troubles me. May we grow in wisdom by seeking God. Moving on in this passage, we go to verse 9. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation because like a flower, the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass its flower falls and its beauty perishes, so also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuit. James is simply saying, some of us who are feeling worthless and abandoned in our troubles in this time, Jesus wants to lift you up. Those that feel like, oh, I've got it, who are proud in their abilities, I pray that this season humbles you that you may ask God for help. Those with their faces in the dirt, let Jesus lift you up, and those with their heads in the cloud, let Jesus pull you down to earth. My brothers and sisters, I urge you, with all that is in me, that we would claim the truth that Jesus is for us, And Jesus has something for us in this season. He's walking with us and he wants to do something new in us. May we as a people of Good Shepherd value trouble and hardship this season as an opportunity for joy that we may grow in endurance and wisdom as we intimately draw closer to Jesus more than we ever have. Amen. Now, here's what I want you to do. In your homes, I have a simple question for you. Here's the question. What opportunity is there for me and my family in this season? What I want you to do now is gather with your family together and process this question together. Now, if you're alone, please just don't go and blow this off. Sit and prayerfully ask Jesus this question. Take some time and reflect, what is the opportunity there for me and my family in this season? So go ahead and take some moments now and reflect on that question.
Welcome back. The last thing I want you to do, pull out your Bibles and as a family or by yourself, read the last verse in our assigned reading today. James chapter 1, verses 12. It's on the screen. And share what you think this verse means and how you can apply it to yourself and family. Go ahead and do that now. Let's pray it together. Heavenly Father, I just ask that your joy would fill us, a joy that transcends happiness, a joy that's founded on you and your promises, God. So Lord, we claim that ask that you would speak to our hearts in this moment of reflection, God. When it feels like the dark lingers longer than the night When the shadows feel like giants Should I? 
we need you each one of us wants to be that person who perseveres who endures we want to be people of great character and we want to be people of hope but God it's so hard we are tired we need your presence within us God, we need you to come and fill us up, to give us strength for this coming day, to give us strength to make the next best move. So Jesus, come and be with us. Speak to us. Walk with us. Now, we need your grace. We need your love. God, we are faced with challenges. We are seniors who uh, have let, had to let go of our dreams of prom or graduation or senior year things. God, we, we are parents who um, are having to learn how to homeschool our kids, and it's hard, and we don't know how to do this. God, we, we are people who are alone in our homes and can't leave and haven't left in 30 days. God, we, we are people who struggle. We are people who are under hardship. We have no strength left, so we ask you to be our strength. We rely not on what we can do, but you, what you can do in and through us. Renew us. Give us your strength. Give us endurance and hope. Father, we also lift up the family of Joanne Pernu, who passed away on Wednesday. Jesus, would you wrap Charlie, her husband, in your, in your loving arms? We pray in Christian sympathy that you would comfort him and that family as they mourn the loss of their beloved mother and wife. Be with them as they mourn. And now, Jesus, wherever we are right now, I'd ask us to stand. If we are with others, go ahead and circle up. Hold the hands of those around you. If you are alone, would you join me in standing with our arms uplifted, holding on to the arms of Jesus. Take this moment now in your house of worship where you are. Would you pray? Pray for those concerns you have for your family. Pray for your concerns that you have for your neighbors, your friends, those on your heart. Go ahead. Take a moment now and pray.
thank you, Jesus, that you hear all of our prayers. Now, my brothers and sisters, pray for, pray for our hearts, our minds, that we would see opportunity, that we would see joy amidst the struggle of life. Pray now. Jesus, as a family of family, we come together praising you because you are with us. Look out for those who are in need and use us to be your hands and feet in this season. And all God's people said, amen. As we move into this time of offering, would you give your tithes and offerings to the Lord by going online and using our website or also dropping your gifts and tithes um, in the mail or on our campus. As we move into this time of celebrating uh, our Christian heritage and faith, as well as our um, Holy Communion, would you grab your wine and your bread and get your bread, uh, your crackers and your grape juice ready as well. As you're doing this, let us um, join together in reciting and professing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy Spirit, come now. Connect us to the saints of all ages that we may have their faith, that we may endure the struggles of our time in the way that they have faithfully endured for the joy set before them. Jesus, we are reminded that it was for our joy and for your joy that you endured the cross. Now, Lord, we remember that your joy, that your joy has been made complete with us today as we celebrate and remember what you've done for us. We remember in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Break this and give it to each other in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, poured it out for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, my brothers and sisters, as you gather around those in your homes or lift up your hands, would you join me in praying the prayer of our Lord Jesus? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you share in the Lord's meal around your table, may you give the bread saying, this is the body of Christ broken for you. May you give the wine saying, this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Just respond in worship. Just pursue the presence of God in your homes. God, we need you right now. Sing this as a prayer. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. 
want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. So I'm laying down all my religion. I'm laying down I'm laying down Oh my religion I'm laying down I want to know you Lord I want to know you box you in, but I'm laying down, I want to know you, Lord, I used to think that I could box you in, but I'm laying down, I want to know you, Lord, so I'm laying down, oh my religion. I'm laying down, I want to know you, Lord. I'm laying down, oh my religion. I'm laying down, I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Oh 
reach out and you find me in the dust. He said, no amount of untruths can separate us. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. In the simple gospel, I will rejoice in you, Lord. I will rejoice in the simple gospel. I will rejoice in you. in you, Lord. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but
bless you. I hope this service has just spoken to your heart and given you courage to continue. Uh, just want to remind you to keep the Pernu family in your prayers. Joan was on hospice for a while. Um, it has nothing to do with the COVID-19, um, but we just want to keep them 
in our prayers. So keep praying for Charlie and that family. As we close, may you go now and be the hands and feet of Jesus this week, bringing that hope to all you meet. May you receive a blessing from our Lord then. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now go in peace and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.